let's shift our focus back to working with audio and more specifically editing audio. I'm gonna unsolo my bass track here and I'm gonna go up to track two, which is my lone audio track. We brought in this top loop to slice it to a drum machine so we no longer need this clip. I will delete it. And while this clip slot is selected, I will press B to bring up my pop-up browser. And I wanna bring in some content from a different package. So I'm gonna leave the beat port sounds alone. You served us well, thank you very much. And I'm gonna collapse the Bitwig package. And I wanna check out this Capsun Pro audio package. There's some pretty interesting stuff in here. So let's expand it. And we have a folder, just download trap and twerk folder. I'm gonna select this. And the sample that I wanna bring in is some hand claps and I believe it's right here. So let me select this. Nice, all right, so I wanna bring this into the clip slot, I'm gonna hit okay. And there it is. Now at the bottom, we're still looking at the automation editor and what I wanna do is look at the regular editor. So I'm gonna press E and now I can see the contents of this clip. Now I can always expand the editor panel by clicking and holding this dividing line and dragging it up. But if my primary focus is editing the audio, then I probably want this to be my main view. I mentioned way back in the course that there's three distinct views. We've seen two so far, the arrange and the mix view, but we also have the edit view. I can get to the edit view by pressing edit right here, or I can use the shortcut, which is shift tab. There we go. So now I can see the note editor right here, and then I still have a device panel right down here. If I don't need to see the device panel, I can hide that by pressing D. And now I have a full screen note editor. I like that. I don't really think I need the inspector panel right now either, so let me go ahead and hide that. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to make it so that I can take this clap loop and basically make it so that the hand claps land at specific parts of the bar. Let me go ahead and play the beat so far. This clip isn't playing, so let me go back to the arrange view. There we go, and I'm gonna launch my clap clip right now. Let's go ahead and solo or mute the bass. Now it's actually a pretty cool pattern. So I think what I'd like to do is maybe have one that just stays the way that it is. And then I'll duplicate this. Again, I have my duplicate action pinned to my toolbar. And in this duplicate, I wanna be able to edit the audio event so that I can change the way that this clap is playing without needing to slice it and play it from a drum machine. So back to my edit panel, here we go. Now we're looking at the audio event that's contained within this clip. A clip can have many more than just one audio event. And if I take this audio event and I start to cut it or slice it, split it up, I can then rearrange the order of this. I can remove parts. I can do a lot of different things with it. So we wanna be able to utilize our tools for this. We have our tool chooser here, and by now, hopefully you remember the shortcuts. One, two, three, four, and five. Tool five is our knife tool, and that's gonna come in very, very handy for this right now. If I click here, we see there's our knife tool. So I just wanna cut this up, and I wanna be able to move the different audio events that I get to different places inside of this clip. Before I do that though, let's go ahead and go down to the bottom right hand corner. And we looked at this before to see what the resolution was of the grid inside of our clip. Down here in the bottom portion of this, we have snap to, and we can choose different things that these audio events should snap to. The main thing I want my audio events to snap to is the grid, because I've set my grid to 16th notes. I like that timing, and I feel like every time I cut up one of these audio events and move it someplace else, it just snap to the 16th note grid. So I'm gonna leave this on. I'm not worried about the grid offset or having to snap to other events, so I'm gonna deactivate both of those. So when I start to cut this audio event into smaller pieces and I move it around, it's gonna to snap to the lines in my grid. So that's all that I need enabled. Now I can start using my knife tool to start cutting this event up and then moving things around, removing what I don't want, etc. So I think, let's play this again. Ah, I realize I'm looking at the wrong clip, so. <laughs> Let's go back to our, doesn't really matter which view that we play this from. There we go. Okay. So while this is playing, I'm gonna use my knife tool, and you can see this is snapping to the lines of my grid, so I'm just gonna start cutting this. 
As I cut this, we end up creating extra audio events. So now we no longer have one audio event in this clip, we have multiple audio events inside of this clip. All right, I'm cutting this kind of randomly. So now that this has been cut, I'm gonna switch back to my pointer tool and I'm gonna to start to remove parts of this, uh, parts of the audio event that I don't need and I'll rearrange the timing of these claps. Selecting this, this is blank, so I can simply delete that if I want. There we go. And let's go ahead and have one of these claps land right on the one. Okay. And let me just play it. So you already hear the difference there. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this audio event. All right, cool. I'm gonna make this audio event a little bit shorter. I'll hover my mouse over the end of it, click and hold, make that snap there. And then I'll move this here. Nice. I think another thing I'd like to do is maybe change some of the parameters of these different audio events. So let's bring our inspector panel back up. I'm gonna press I. And every time I select one of these audio events, I can change specific things about just the individual event. So if we go down here, we have phase, which is very helpful when we're cutting up these different audio events. If we wanna avoid any unnecessary pops, we can have them fade in and fade out. We have the ability to change the gain, change the pitch, and even change the way each one of these are panned. I think what I'd like to do is, uh, you know what? What I wanna do actually isn't in the inspector panel. So let's look at the top of our toolbar and see if we see anything different that we didn't see before. And yes, we have a button for event. So this will give us specific options for audio events. If I click on this, there we go. The option that I want is to be able to reverse this particular audio event. So it's just gonna affect this one audio event. It won't affect anything else in the clip. And as we can see, I've already pinned this to my toolbar. Now, if you go back through the course, you'll notice we never saw this icon. This is only showing up because I have an audio event here. And again, this is contextual. It knows that since I'm dealing with an audio event, the thing that I pin that relates to the event shows up in my toolbar. Let's reverse that one event. Okay. And I think, let me go back to my knife tool. Let me press five. And I think with this one here, I wanna transpose this down an octave. So just that one event, I hit minus 12. Okay. All right, I like that. So let me go back to the arrange panel. Here we go. So if I play the first one, that's the original clip. And that's my edited clip with all of our new audio events that have been affected to my liking.